Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. I want to do another lecture in a series on dispensationalism. This is number two. But this video is going to be about the first covenant, which is mentioned in the Bible, which we call the Edenic Covenant. It's the covenant of Eden. Now some people object to the idea that there was a covenant of Eden uh, because the word covenant is not mentioned um, in the overall um, in the overall description but that mustn't put us off because many a covenant can exist without the word actually having to be used what we have is a situation in which God um, enters into a covenant with mankind with Adam and with Eve in which he promises them blessing and he warns them of judgment if they sin and he presents before mankind one simple law to be kept so let's read the passage together and we'll see exactly what we have in mind by the Edenic covenant in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 it says and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth and God said behold I have made sorry behold I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which there is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat to every beast of the field and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life I have given every green herb for meat and it was so so right from the very sixth day of creation God entered into a covenant with Adam Adam is a representative head of the whole of the human race and thus the requirements of God to Adam were requirements that God made with Adam and all his seed and the actions of Adam are therefore attributed to all men. Uh, the covenant that God makes with Adam is based on the blessings of God which can be secured by man on obedience to his law. Um, there are seven provisions of the covenant. First of all, number one, Adam was to be fruitful and to multiply. They were to have children in the flesh and the children that they have are to come under the same covenant. We see this in verse 28. The second thing is that Adam was to subdue the earth in the sense that Adam and his children were to have governmental control over the produce of the earth. That's verse 28. Also in verse 28, we see the third feature. Adam was to have governmental control on the behalf of God over the creatures of the earth and they would look to him for leadership that's also in verse 28 in verse 29 uh, to verse 30 and in chapter 2 verse 16 we have the fourth feature Adam came before the Lord with a certain dietary moral law the Lord placed before Adam all the most beautiful and nutritious food in the form of fruit and presumably vegetables and herbs and Adam number five was given the privilege of serving God by dressing and maintaining the garden of the Lord this is in chapter 2 verse 15 so right from the start then Adam had all the knowledge and the skills to do the job that the Lord had called him to do that's a very important thing that we need to understand the responsibility was the Lord's to provide for Adam all that he needed, both in knowledge and in wisdom and in skill. Number six, the Lord put before Adam one law. He was instructed directly from the Lord that he was not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This tree was probably not any different from any other tree, except that it was forbidden. And this created a moral law, which made Adam morally responsible. Now, after the creation of Eve, Adam informed her of God's law, 
However, later it appears that uh, he did not explain this correctly and she misunderstood the law. That's uh, chapter 2, verse 15. And the last feature of the Edenic covenant is that the law of the Lord gave to Adam clearly indicated that if Adam took of the forbidden fruit, then he would surely die. Now, this is what we mean by mortality. Mortality doesn't mean that you die immediately. Mortality means that you become a person that will one day be subject to death. Perhaps death immediately begins to work in the body and produces all sorts of decay, which uh, may, take, may be very slow and may be a long thing to experience, but will uh, come to us all in the end. He said that he would surely die. Uh, he would become a person who would die one day if he took of the forbidden fruit. Of course, Adam didn't die on the day that he took the fruit, but he would die eventually. The law, which is the basis of the Edenic covenant, was neither easy or difficult to obey. If it were too easy, then Adam would never have sinned. And if the temptation were too hard, then he would have been unable to resist. The model choice was exactly what that was. It was a choice. It was neither it was either faithfulness to their creator or open rebellion. Sin is rebellion against the will of God. That's what sin is. Now, clearly, this was a covenant of law and demanded obedience. This covenant was broken. Man was banished from the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was the stage upon which man's moral character was tested. And of course, man failed. Um, and the whole of the human race, that all of the sons of Adam uh, follow him in his sin. Now, the problem of the human race is not just that all men sin but that all the children of men are the sons of Adam, and in Adam all men sin. Now there are some people that object to this concept as being a covenant. The word covenant isn't used, as I said, but the concept of an agreement between God and man in which certain requirements for obedience were made and certain warnings of judgment are given, and this makes the Edenic world a clear covenant relationship. God had spoken to Adam saying that in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. This phrase means mortality. The things that comes to our attention here is that in the day that Adam sinned, he became mortal and would be subject to decay and death. And the overall purpose of God was to test every man in his mortal life and in the various dispensations and reward them in resurrection to eternal life or in resurrection to condemnation. So this question of life and death, mortality, that is mortal life and eternal life, they are the key features and the key message of the Bible from its very first pages to its final pages. And the concept of the word eternal life is always in contrast to mortal life. We either are subject to mortality, we're either subject to death, or we have eternal life. We have one or the other. We either have mortality or we have immortality one or the other well that's the edenic covenant considered the next covenant to be considered which god makes with all mankind is the covenant that god made with adam after he had sinned because now they're not going to be in the garden of eden they're not going to be having all the great blessings and privileges that the edenic world gave them now they're going to be in a rough and tumble world a world of pain and suffering, a world of sunshine and showers, a world of storms and blessing.
That's the next covenant. And we'll look upon that the next time that we come together. So look forward to catching up with you the next time. Bye for now.